I was 17 when I had my first encounter with something strange. I was hiking through some tall brush near my mother's house, about an hour south of Los Angeles, when I saw something weird moving up a hill. I saw an animal, as I later discovered, or maybe not an animal. It was walking on two legs, but looked like a cricket looking thing. I kid you not. At first, I thought it was a man in an insect costume or something. It was so strange. It had the tiniest little appendages coming out of its back that were about a foot long each. This creature also appeared to have antennae. It was also slowly moving up this large hill, but moving very strangely. And it scared me, so I ran back to my house and didn't say anything to my mother. She wouldn't have believed me anyway. I was smoking a lot of weed throughout my time at my mom's at that time, so she probably would have attributed it to that. But I tell you what, no amount of weed is going to make you see what I did. As the day wore on, I received a very strange call from a friend. He called my house later on in the afternoon, saying he was out on a trail in San Fernando Valley and that I would never believe what he had seen. My friends all grew up in West Hollywood, so I know they've seen some things, but this was something much different. To my horror, he told me over the phone that he saw this insectoid-like creature, describing it to the T what I had just saw hours prior to that happening. I started panicking over the phone and told him what I had seen earlier in that day and that it was the same thing he saw. He got quiet. The silence was broken with him saying that at least he knows that we're both not crazy. Not much was said after that. He always confided in me to tell me very personal things, so I had no doubts he was telling the honest truth. It disturbed me is what it did, considering I just seen the same creature he had only hours before. The burning question remains, what are these creatures? I saw an insect mantis type of creature. It was in the remote wilderness of Illinois, a place I know very little about. I was trying to do some hiking on foot. I pulled into a campsite that had been long abandoned. No people, nothing. Just the old remains of a bonfire and the occasional crow or raven around. One of these creatures stepped out of the woods and looked around. It was huge. It was quite tall with what appeared to be a kind of crest on the top of its head. It also had a long, black, rubbery-like tail that reached out about three feet from behind the creature. I was terrified, but it didn't appear to notice me. It's like it came out of the woodline and not knew that I was there. This was basically a man-sized mantis-like creature. I was not a trained outdoor expert or anything, and in my naivety, I had probably just walked in on this thing's territory. It was a bit too much to handle. I hid behind a spot in the trees and waited for it to enter a new area of woods before I running back to my car and vomiting. The sight of this thing just made me sick. It felt wrong, everything. Even from the moment I pulled up to this camp spot, something felt off and I knew it. Every year, my family has this huge throwdown barbecue just outside of Houston, Texas where they live, where all of the family flies down for the weekend and parties. By party, I mean eat lots of smoked barbecued meat, drink beer, and spend time catching up with one another with copious amounts of wine and other good food. This occurs in the month of July, but this year, because of COVID, our annual event has been canceled. Sigh. So, I'm going to use this opportunity to tell you about something very strange that really weirded me out last year that this happened. So, 2019, we all fly down there. We meet up with everybody. My family's house, well, it's more like an estate because it's a mansion. It's seriously massive. They run a very successful auto business, so they have buku bucks. So there's room for about every one of us to sleep in our own guest bedroom very comfortably. We have a humongous barbecue pit with lots of drinks, wine, beer, alcohol, anything, and plenty of good times. They have tons of acreage and own probably about 50 plus with just thick forests, lagoons, creeks and rivers, and what have you. When you get there, you almost just want to go on an adventure. 
They actually have a few golf carts just sitting around for you to get in and drive around the property due to its sheer size. Look, I love drinking beer and I love eating food as much as anybody, but I really love fishing. The lagoon they have on the back side of their property is one of the coolest spots. It's actually privatized, so they do all their own fishing there. I've been going to it for years every summer when I'm there for the weekend to check it out, and I always try and squeeze in some fishing if I can, even if it's just a session or two. Sometimes it's harder than others, but this time I was determined. Like I said, you had to take a golf cart to even get back to the little pathway that leads out to the lagoon. Then you take a small trail that's probably only a few hundred yards to a decent sized lagoon tucked away in the forest. Like I said, it's all private, so we don't have to worry about any other people coming there or competing with anybody. I think there's mainly just small bass and trout and maybe a few other types of smaller fish. Nothing magnificent or worth bragging about, but it sure is peaceful. I'm gonna be honest with you too. Sometimes I don't wanna be hanging around noisy drunk family all the time for the whole weekend. I'm a huge fan of solace and quiet, and there ain't nothing more peaceful than sitting by yourself for hours with your line casted into the water. Thankfully, because of how rich my family is, I didn't have to worry about bringing any of my own fishing equipment. They had a shed nearby dedicated to just housing rods, lines, and lures that I was able to borrow and use anytime I pleased. My family uses this lagoon often for their own private fishing and it actually feeds into a couple other smaller rivers around the area. I think much of the acreage here that goes on is just undeveloped forest and part of the lagoon. It's not a giant lagoon by any means, but it's relatively good size, and good sized enough that I can't see the end of it just because it trails off behind the woods and the trees. So I'm sitting there on this little bridge with my line in the water, just enjoying the peace and calm and quiet. I'm close enough to my family and to where I can hear them gut laughing, and I knew in that instant they were already intoxicated. They usually don't get that loud and boisterous until they've had some alcohol in their system. Inebriation is a funny thing. As much as I like to be included in their shindig, I do like solitude, so I was very much enjoying this introverted me time. I wasn't getting a bite like a usual, which is not normal. I've had times of fishing where I wouldn't get a bite for hours, but the past few times I've fished at this lagoon, it's usually stocked full of fish and wouldn't have to wait too long before I got a nibble. That's when I began to feel that I was being watched and started feeling really uncomfortable. I ignored it at first and just kept my focus on the line in the water, but the feeling began to grow stronger to the point to where I could no longer ignore it. I started looking around, seeing if maybe any family had crept up on me and was trying to play games. Nobody had come around, and that's when I noticed the forest around the lagoon had grown deathly silent. See, that's generally not a good sign, and everything in my insides was telling me I should probably leave. My reasoning and logical brain kept trying to tell me that this is nonsense, and there's nothing wrong. Even though my skin was virtually crawling, I couldn't help but shake the feeling. That's when I saw it for the first time. A little ways off the bridge, to the right, and poking itself out halfway the forest, was what I can only describe to you as an insect-like creature. I know that probably doesn't make any sense to you, but this thing was probably about eight to nine feet tall, huge, hulking, and resembled that of a praying mantis in a way. It was much uglier though. It reminded me if you crossed a xenomorph from the alien movies and a praying mantis. It didn't have that xenomorph alien-like head though that you would see in the movies, but instead just a hideous insectoid looking head. It even had the praying mantis-like claws where they fold in, and it was standing there on two legs. It had these bright yellow eyes, but it was staring at me, and it looked very insect-like. As soon as I made eye contact with it, I knew that it knew that I saw it, and I could feel the evil and hatred emanating from this thing. You know how when you make eye contact with somebody and you could almost feel into their soul? Well, that's what I felt in that moment. It's like it was communicating to me that it was going to hurt me and kill me. And that moment, I threw down my rod and I ran and I ran. Got the golf cart and drove up to the house and stayed there. 
I was freaked out. I didn't know what to do or who to talk to. Parts of my family thought I was acting strange and wondering why I was not joining in the rest of the family during the times of eating and drinking, but I just used the good old excuse that I wasn't feeling well and I was sick. I never told any of my family what really happened or what I saw, just because they probably wouldn't believe me anyway. I'm no stranger to people talking about seeing weird stuff out in the woods, like Bigfoot, or even the occasional staircase in the middle of nowhere, but I sure as hell ain't heard nobody ever talk about insect creatures taller than me with bright glowing yellow eyes. Certainly, that was a new one. Maybe that has to do with the lagoon and why it felt different that day. There's also more fog than usual, and things in general just felt off. Maybe that's the reason why the fish weren't really biting 